Hello, Church of the Front Range, and welcome to the third week of our summer read-through. Today, we are reading through the end of Deuteronomy, and really the end of Moses' leadership of the Israelites. These four chapters are stock full of exhortations, exhortations to obedience, the dire consequences of disobedience, and prophecy about how Israel will undoubtedly stray away. Start with Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. God makes it clear that if you want life and prosperity, then you must walk in his ways. Keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments. He also makes it clear in verses 17 through 18 that if you desire death and adversity, which I don't think any of us do, then go ahead and turn your heart from him. Stop obeying him. Worship and serve other gods because doing so will surely result in you perishing. And after illustrating the two different paths, God exhorts his people to love him, to obey him, and to hold fast to him. This is what we call uncompromising obedience to him, friends. Sound familiar? It is part of who God has called Church of the Front Range to be. We obey his voice alone. We hold fast to him, and we're not drawn away from him. Instead, we walk in his ways and enjoy the life that he gives. Seems clear enough, right, to us and to Israel. Well, to make it even more clear, we see in Deuteronomy 31, 9 through 12, that Moses writes down the law, which was to be read every seven years in front of all of Israel, so that they, quote, may hear and learn and fear the Lord your God and be careful to observe all the words of this law. The see, the standard was set. It was communicated clearly to all of Israel, and guardrails were even established, so not one generation would not hear. They were without excuse. Yet this clarity, this revelation of God's ways and will would be forsaken time and time again throughout Israel's history. And God even told Moses and Joshua as such in Deuteronomy 31, 16, he says, this people will arise and play the harlot with strange gods of the land, the midst of which they are going, and they will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them, which the result is that God would surely hide his face in that day because of all the evil that they would do, for they will turn to other gods. And God even gives the reason that they would even do this in verse 20, for when I bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore their fathers, and they have eaten and are satisfied and become prosperous, then they will turn to other gods and serve them and spurn me and break my covenant. This is really such a poignant reminder to us that satisfaction and security is often found in the world can cause us to turn from him and serve something or someone else. But can you imagine being Moses and Joshua at this moment? All that Moses has done and all that Joshua will do will still not be enough to keep Israel from straying from the path of life. And yet Joshua modeled obedience and faith, even with the knowledge that the people he was leading would certainly turn away. And after such a revelation, God instructs Moses to write a song, that's chapter 22, that will be used in the future to be a witness between God and Israel. And of course, this song was also taught to Israel. It's quite powerful in its witness against a rebellious Israel. It's a powerful recount of God's past faithfulness. It's a powerful indictment of Israel's past and future response to God in the place of apostasy. And it's a powerful judgment of God's withdrawal and requisite punishment or the consequences of disobedience. As if God really needed to state his case again and make a plea to Israel, yet he does in his great mercy and compassion. And after such an indictment, Moses heaps blessing on each tribe in chapter 33 and culminating in a reminder that the eternal God is a dwelling place. They're really their dwelling place. God is so great and he chose Israel and he has chosen us. He was for Israel, but they weren't always for him. And he was on Israel's side, yet they weren't always on his side. So the question for us is, are we for him always? Are we on his side always? Not being has dire consequences. And I think this is another reminder to us as a church body of the paramount importance of reading God's word daily, the full counsel of God's word. Daily was required by the Mosaic law that the entirety of the law be read in full to all Israel every seven years. Why? So they wouldn't forget and they'd be reminded of God's ways and will for their lives, his character that was revealed to them during their time in the wilderness. Well, the history of Israel paints a bleak picture, right? Rife with forsaking God seemingly every turn. 
And it makes sense why, because God revealed it. Satisfaction and prosperity was their downfall. It's like he knew that they would forget who the provider and protector was. And it certainly reveals that their hearts would stray, that they, when they believed they didn't need God anymore, they'd put more stock in their ability. Let us not be like the nation of Israel in this way. Let us at Church of the Front Range long for undivided dependence or competence is dependence in the kingdom of God. Let's rely on him and let's be those that refuse to compromise our obedience. In other words, as he says it, he sees it. For friends, his way alone is life giving. Thank you for tuning in again, friends. Until next time.